raster data and geo server and geo storage. Okay, thank you. <coughs> a little bit about the outline. Uh, we're going to I'm going to say a few words about who we are, then the building blocks about uh, geo server and geo and geo tools for raster data management, the recent uh, achievements where recent means since uh, the post 4G 2011, which isn't that recent, but that's okay. And then what's cooking, what we're working on. Uh, GeoSolution, very quickly, uh, an Italian company. We've been founded in 2006. Uh, we have worked in developing a few projects, products, open source, map store, GeoServer, GeoNetwork, and so on. And yeah, let's not bother too much with that. Okay, what we're going to talk about, the stack that GeoServer is using from the bottom up, JAI, the Java Advanced uh, Imaging Library from Sun, then Oracle, which has actually been developed by the JPL, uh, the Jet Proportion Lab of NASA at Caltech in the US together with Sun for the, uh, I think the first Mars rover mission, like in 99, 97, something like that. Uh, it's a relatively good library, it's Java based, but it has, uh, also, native accelerated version of some of the operation, which makes use of uh, uh, processor-specific operation like SSC, MMX, et cetera, et cetera. It has a nice tile-based uh, deferred ex execution model with the integrated tile caching, which means actually you can create chains of operation that are tile-based and they work in pool or deferred execu execution model. So you load the data that you need only when you need them. So you go from sources to sync and you start pooling the data as you write on disk or, uh, or, on, uh, or you show on, um, on a screen or things like that. It's easily extensible, <coughs> and this is the good stuff. Bad stuff, there is no source code for the native operation, while there is for the uh, Java counterpart, and the development is more or less stopped. So we'll say something about that afterwards. Image.io is, again, a standard library from Sun, then Oracle for doing I.O. on raster data. Uh, partly ships with the JDK, partly is an extension uh, that you need to install separately. It uh, integrates ni nicely with JAI, so again, it supports tile-based, deferred, and actually also immediate execution model, which, which is the opposite, load everything in memory as soon as possible. Uh, you usually want to use the tile-based deferred execution when you process large images in chunks. You want to use the immediate execution model when you have a WMS and you request small images and you want to be as fast as possible. Uh, it has the same problems on, of JAI. The native code is not uh, available. The source code for the other operation it is. Uh, the developer more or less stopped. Uh, uh, I didn't write this, but I don't think it's entirely true because the, the part that is inside the JDK, it's actively developed. The part that is outside, it's more or less, I wouldn't say that, but it hasn't received a lot of attention in the latest years. Which means that uh, JAI tools is an extension of JAI, which we developed for uh, uh, for GeoServer and GeoTools together with other people. Actually, it's, it's been started from other people, not from us, and it provides a few additional operation to the things that are uh, missing inside JAI, like for example, range lookup, which is a very simple operation to transform a raster, <coughs> specifying a, a piecewise transformation. It's a little bit more complex than simple range lookup. But you can also do vectorizing, contouring, uh, and things like that. Um, there are also other <coughs> things in it. We'll see it afterwards. Image.io X is an extension for Image.io, which we developed, uh, that actually allows you to connect, for example, to GDAL, uh, to JPEG 2000, to Mat, uh, MATLAB uh, Mat File 5, which is the last open version of MATLAB files, Turbo JPEG. Uh, uh, there are a, a few rewritten formats from the standard image I.O. like TIFF, which, which has been entirely, I wouldn't say entirely, but mostly rewritten to support, for example, float data, double data, big TIFF, uh, JPEG 2000 compression, although that's a little bit tricky. Uh, then on top of this, we have GeoTools, which is the base library inside GeoServer to do everything from data access to rendering. And it actually contains the internal model uh, on which GeoServer works on. For those who know, the feature for the vector data and the coverage is for the raster data. And on top of this, we have GeoServer. Uh, I'm assuming you know more or less what GeoServer is. So put all together, 
this is what we talked about. And these are the components we are going to describe a little bit. A GeoServer is the yellow and uh, red part. Uh, again, JI and JI tools, operations on raster, ImageIO, ImageIO X, input formats, GeoTools add georeferencing on top of them, and GeoServer uses them all. OK, a few things that we have done. Uh, we weren't happy with the performances of the JPEG uh, encoder decoder inside the JDK. So we found this libjpeg turbo project, which is open source as well as GPL on the web, and it's supported on many, many platforms. So we created a reader and an encoder for ImageIO, and we released it as open source inside ImageIO X. Uh, the speed up varies a lot depending on the platform and depending on what you do, because the speed ups we are talking about here are inside, for example, a WMS request. So we're not talking about the speed up of simply encoding one image from PNG to JPEG on disk using libjpeg or libjpeg turbo. In that, those cases, the speed up can be much higher. Uh, the speed up here, I've seen speed up for like three, uh, four X. In this case, we are talking about 10, 20% or 30, 40%, depending on the cases and on how the image is structured, the image that you are, uh, let's say the source data you are transforming into a get map request. But think about this, I mean, this speed up comes for free without any code. So it's just a matter of installing an extension. And in some cases, uh, we have seen even better, reaching like 40, 50%. Uh, this is especially true if your data is like uh, blue marble, true marble, then modis, maris, that doesn't have a lot of variation. Uh, the dynamics is relatively simple. In that case, the libjpeg turbo can give uh, extreme uh, speed ups. We worked a lot for a few military clients on supporting NITEF. For those who know what NITEF is, I don't remember, honestly. Uh, it's a national imagery transmission format, something. It's a way of encoding metadata that some military, I think in the US, but also in NATO, they come up with to make it more complex for normal people because, I mean, everything was already there. Uh, so we based all the work on uh, an, extend, an, an existing open source library, which is called Nitro. So we have uh, one more acronym to remember. I don't know what Nitro stands for. Uh, and this works for, especially for JPEG 2000. JPEG 2000 is a most end format where you can actually embed whatever you want in it, XML, uh, 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 binary stuff, additional metadata. So Nitro is actually using the extensibility of JP, um, sorry, NITF is using the extensibility of JPEG 2000 to embed additional metadata inside the images. So if you know what, that, what NITF is, you will know what these uh, 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 words talk about, otherwise it's more, more or less user. It's actually ways to describe the images. Uh, we worked a lot on improving the performance and robustness of the raster chain inside GeoServer, which means at the GeoTools level. <clears throat> so actually, for example, one thing that is interesting, and we'll see this afterwards, we notice that when you do complex stuff, for example, especially mosaic in different type of data that has different resolutions natively, we ended up with chains that were really long. And this what in chain, I mean, like multiple affines, then translate, then warp to, the, to reach the original results because we were composing on this operation. Uh, we noticed that these chains could be simplified before actually starting to write the final image to improve performance, but also quality a lot. Because if you do too many affine transformation, depending on the type of the interpolation that you use, you can see the jagged line effect. We'll see that afterwards. So we worked a lot on simplifying this. And uh, we worked a lot on improving the internal tie caching for, uh, for um, JAI, but in the end, we didn't release this, honestly. We will probably sooner or later release it because it works very well on only on very specific use cases. In the most common use cases, although the improvement on type caching per se in terms of performances, in some cases, like 80%, the weight of this operation in the entire chain is very small. So you actually don't notice that much in the, in the generic use case, especially WMS when you process small images. This is especially true if you're processing with WFS, like gigabytes of data. In that case, you really see the difference. And this is what I was talking about. Uh, the image is not that clear, but yeah, you should be able to see. This is actually, I don't know why this image came out this 
it's the same data, the same image with different uh, uh, coalescing, that's how we call it, of the, the chain. The first one, as you can see, the, the buildings and the line are very jagged. If you look at the last one, this is after, oops, the coalition is configurable. I mean, the more time you spend on coalition, the better is the result, but it's always a trade-off in terms of performances. And this is actually at the increasing iteration of coalition, the better quality that you can get. This is for nearest. For bicubic, it's even much better. Uh, uh, we worked a lot on the image mosaic. We've been doing a workshop on this as well as another presentation. Uh, I won't go into too much details, but we worked a lot on uh, allowing support for additional dimension besides uh, time. So we're talking about <coughs> elevation, uh, other uh, geophysical indicators. Also dimension with ranges. This is important for remote sensing data, especially in the meteorological field, because uh, the scenes that you might serve, uh, they cannot be uh, finally described by single time because the satellite, when it acquires a SWOT, is going to take a while in certain cases, even one hour for some satellites that are really uh, uh, far away from the Earth. So in that case, you need to have the begin and start time for describing the image. Uh, we added also the possibility to filter the image mosaic from the outside on the fly for WMS, so you actually can interact with the index of the image mosaic and filter images on the fly. Uh, we have had a few projects with that. These are actually our custom dimensions, and they're interpreted in GeoServer. Uh, you can actually have them listed in the WMS get capabilities, and you can control them from the user interface in terms of the units and unit symbols. Uh, we added the possibility to sort the result. These are relatively new. Once you select a certain number of features, you want to control how they overlap on top of them, and this is how. Uh, it uses the same sorting mechanism on WFS, and you can actually tell how to sort the index, sorting the attribute in the index. For example, if your images have additional dimensions, like, for example, time and elevation, you might want to, uh, actually, I would have done the opposite, but that's okay. You might want to sort them to have the freshest on top at the minimum elevation. So you can do time descendant and uh, elevation uh, ascendant. Uh, this is uh, something you can do with WFS, so we reused the same, uh, the same syntax. And you can actually ask the mosaic to change the overlapping on the fly of the images. Uh, stacking merging is relatively complex, uh, but it's to support WMSEO and to actually be able to, instead of merging the images, to return them as stacks, so multiple bands. This is very technical. I won't talk about it. We started to add support for NetCTF with a uh, few, many, some limitations. Uh, it, the work was mainly done for meteorological oceanographic data. Uh, we worked with a few models, <coughs> Polyphemus, Gome, uh, Nettuno, uh, Roms, uh, another few of them. There are like probably 25 to 30 models that I've been hearing about in the years, so it's very difficult to say you can support all of them. We're talking about meteorological models. Uh, this has been done to be able to serve actually mosaic on multiple NetCDF files. Uh, the use case is that you actually have multiple files like this. When each file contains multiple geophysical variables, this is a meteorological model for pollutants. And each of these has multiple dimensions, time z, lat, and longitude. And what you want to do, you want to turn these into actually from a single mosaic to multiple coverages with, uh, uh, with multiple dimensions, like in that case, time and elevation. <coughs> uh, we also added the possibility in GeoServer to interact directly with the index of an image mosaic so that you can actually uh, create a mosaic on the fly, send in the configuration, uh, reading the schema, and then filtering the content on the granules, and also interact with the content. So adding new files via the harvest operation. Here I'm telling GeoServer, harvest in new, this new shape file. So if your model produced daily, once a day, twice a day, new data, you can ingest new data on the fly, and you can delete the old one because usually you keep a moving window of your data. You don't want to keep thousands of years of data for uh, meteorological oceanographic data because the forecast after a couple of days are useless. This again is very technical. Uh, this is the counterpart of what I said on the LibJPEG Turbo. We use it on GeoServer as an extended output format. 
which is especially good for, uh, actually it works also in uh, GeoWeb Cache. I didn't, I didn't mention that. Uh, it's an extension you can just take and drop in GeoServer and install the native library. Uh, there is a blog post there that gives you the instruction. It is documented. Uh, we worked a lot on improving the color quantizer in GeoServer. So actually, most part of the time, you, when you set up a WMS, you just put the PNG and you forget about what you're doing. But if you work in Italy where the conne internet connection is a nightmare, uh, you need to understand that actually PNG is mostly too big if you want to serve a, a, a I wouldn't call high performance, but we have a, a few websites that are like, and it is a lot, uh, at peak time 2,000 concurrent connections work in a relatively low hardware. So we need to go there and like fine tune everything. And one of the things that everybody forgets about is PNG8. You can get your images to be four to five times smaller depending on what you're doing. And that saves a lot of time when you're transferring them around if the internet connection is pretty bad. And it's a very simple performance optimization. That's true if you have a good color quantizer, which we didn't have until uh, one year ago. You can see the difference between the old Doct3, which was actually cutting away the transparency, which means no anti-aliasing, which means you cannot use it on vector data. And the new one, which uses an algorithm that Andrea Jaime wrote, and I helped him to optimize a little bit, that uses a median cut and keep it to account transparency as well. So if you just look at the icons, you see the difference. You see the difference also on the streets, but uh, look at the icons. Of course, there is a little bit of a speed loss, which is around 5 10%. But again, if the internet connection is pretty bad, having a, a, a PNG that goes back from, that goes down from 100K to 15K makes uh, a bigger difference than the 10% that you actually spend more in generating the image. Oh, my computer. Uh, this is something you already saw. This is actually the elevation I was talking about when they are in place. Uh, you can actually ask your server to filter your asset data on multiple dimensions. In this case, it was a model that we were trying to find a way to distinguish different run of the same model at the same forecast time and elevation. S because as you know, uh, when you're using forecasting, you always want to see the freshest data. The closer the model is in terms of the runtime, the better the data is. But sometimes you want to compare them, so you need to have a way to go back and forth. And this is how. Uh, we supported WMSEO. I am not going to talk about this. We, re we implemented WCS 2.0 and the relative extension. A uh, couple of words. WCS 2.0 is a complete rewrite of WCS. In terms of the specification, Finally, it seems that someone knows what he's talking about at the OGC when it comes to WCS and inside GeoServer. We implemented most part of the, let's say, the, the model for the WCS 2.0 in, uh, in OGC, it's relatively uh, well thought since there is a core service that does very few things and there are extensions that actually talk about each single aspect of what the WCS processing chain would be. So the basic WCS does uh, almost nothing, you can only ask for a coverage. And you can crop, actually they say, trim and slice, which means selecting a dimension or selecting a subset. If you want to do range subset, which means, for example, selecting bands, scaling, interpolating, reprojecting, or encoding in different formats, the, the standard format is GML, which is kind of useless, uh, you need to use an extension. And if we go back, here we listed whatever we implemented. So. Right now with the WCS 2.0, you can do actually uh, subsetting, interpolation, range subsetting, you can write GeoTIF and NCDF, you can scale and reproject, et cetera, et cetera. We implemented the output format in NetCDF, which is multidimensional, and which actually allows you to do something like this. This very, very simple query on a multidimensional data set. We're actually asking a subset. Uh, the syntax is not that bad, actually. For the NO2, subsetting in longitude, uh, latitude, elevation, and time. And you see we are using ranges. So the output actually is an NetCDF, which is, uh, it's not that clear, but multidimensional. You see there are 13 available time instants, six available elevation, and uh, there is a single uh, uh, 
been for the additional dimension we looked at before. And this is extracting directly from the original data using the image mosaic. The original data doesn't need to be in NetCDF. It can be GeoTIFF. Uh, we are actually transcoding data on the fly, which is a little bit slower than downloading the original file, but it gives you the ability to do whatever you want. Uh, WCSCO, again, it's an extension built on top of WCS for earth observation data. What we're working on, JIX, which is, uh, as I said, I mean, JI is mostly dead. So we looked at ourselves and we said, let's try to create a drop-in replacement for JAI. Uh, we want to do it open source. We still have to decide what the license will be. Uh, we, we will try to be as high performance as possible. We want to be pure Java, uh, at least uh, as a start. And this is something that were, was missing in JAI, the standard JAI. We want the support for no data in processing. We want the support for ROI or area of interest when you're doing processing, and we want to support the concept of uh, band masks similar to what we do in GDAL. And we looked also into GPU acceleration, although this is more a, a wish for the moment. Uh, we started working on, uh, on more. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, Andrea is not here. <laughs> it's a shame. Uh, we started working on some of the operation. Uh, the most important, we don't use all the JAI operations in GeoServer, so we won't need to translate all the time. We started from the one we use more, and the good thing that for, let's say, the version of then it doesn't use uh, uh, no data, new code, or ROI new code, we have the same exact performances of uh, JAI. Uh, for the code that handle no data, uh, we, uh, we managed to actually go down from an initial relatively large uh, drop in performance to 5 to 10% drop in performance. Of course, if you want to keep into account the data in your processing, it makes things a little bit more difficult, so uh, performance will be slightly worse. Uh, there are still a few operations to implement. Honestly, most part of them are very easy. The only one that scares me a little bit is a warp. So we left the warp probably for the, we leave the warp probably for the last one. Again, I mean, if, if someone wants to help or wants to give us a lot of money to work on this, we are, we are happy with that. But even help with coding would be okay. Uh, we are working on actually improving the possibility to render raster data in GeoServer. Because when we coded the uh, raster and symbolizer, it's like six years ago, uh, it probably won't, the last thing I did as a developer was relatively new and let's say I end. But now we need to do more. And you might recognize some of the things that people ask on the mailing list. The ability to reprocess data on the fly, which is more or less there, but we want the ability to do more advanced the contrast enhancement on the fly. We are going to push back the capability to specify footprints for the mosaic in order to actually cut them on the fly. Uh, Andrea developed a pure Java PNG output format, which is as performant as the native one, because we want to remove the usage of uh, the native JAI, JAI, sorry, image IO code for which we don't have the, the source code, if you remember what I said at the beginning. And this is more or less, uh, more or less ready. And it, it's, it's pure Java, but it performs. These are the, uh, there is a blog post somewhere there. These are the uh, uh, stress tests that we give to compare these, uh, the NG, PNGJ and PNG and the NG with the CLIB one, which stands for uh, CodeClip, which is the Sun uh, native library under native ImageIO. As you can see, the performance is pretty much similar. It's only like 10% in some cases. Actually, in some cases, it's even faster uh, loss. But the good thing is that you won't need to install any native library anymore. Uh, this last thing. The raster algebra, uh, this is something that we are already using. We implemented the raster algebra as, a, as an operation in WPS, actually in two ways. An easier one, using a syntax that actually is the, using the OGC CQL filtering. Because if you actually create filters like uh, uh, um, 
doing operations, like for example, uh, I want to see where this raster is within this range and this other raster is within this range, doing maximum, minimum, add some uh, multiplication and things like that, you can do all of this with SQL filters. And we base this off the AI, so this is already works. But we went a little bit further, we used uh, Jifle, which is a, a, let's say, scripting engine that actually allows you to do something like this on the fly, referencing raster inside your server. Uh, here, I, I honestly don't remember what we are computing, but I remember that actually there was an example using the slope and aspect to compute a, a parameter used for the sound propagation model. And actually, this is dynamic, so you can send this script to your server and get the result back again. In this application, we are reingesting the results on the fly in your server, but that is a uh, let's say using an existing process, an import process. But the goal is actually to be able to make this asterage a little bit more robust and actually keep the ability to push these uh, scripts inside the SLDs so that actually you can do this on the fly while you are visualizing data. Why? Con again, contrast enhancement and things like that that you want to do on the fly and you might want to change them from the clients. Right now you can use rendering transformation, but they are relatively static. This approach would be much, much dynamic. Of course, it's relatively slower than using a, a pre-compiled code, but still, in most cases, if you have small imagery, uh, like for WMS, you don't really see the difference. Thank you. For the moment, it is. Uh, it's it's open already. I mean, it's on our. I think it's on our GitHub repository, on the GitHub rep or one of our uh, employees. But yeah, I mean, it's already open. Uh, yeah. Hi, I'm John Curran. I'm the developer of the Net City of Java library. Uh, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Nice to see things happening. Very uh, impressed with your stack. Thinking maybe I'll, I'm going to investigate maybe helping out or getting involved. Uh, let's say we are ready. If you're asking me, we're ready to install the right now, which we are trying to understand because uh, we only work in Net City as a original format. Uh, we have one client who wanted us to work on grid one because, as you know, there are many, many models that beat out grid one still. 
but we found out that we have actually some problems in our from the NetCPS library, and Daniel is probably the one who knows what we are doing. I'm just talking about it. He's looking into it. Uh, when we actually get the log, non, non, longitude and latitude variables, we have some like rounding error. Uh, there is a small difference, but these models are like global models. So it results in like 40 kilometers, uh, mm. uh, let's say, uh, differences mm -hmm. with what they expect. Mm -hmm. It might be our problem we are using the NCBS library Maybe. In, the, in the right way. I, I don't know if you have any suggestions. Um, you could send me a, uh, have a look. Um, the, the the numbers are coded in integers, you know, scaled yeah. scaled integers. It's possible, you know, there's a it's possible there's an error there.